Hello, and welcome back to Tea with Tracy, coming to you on Tuesdays, spilling relevant tips, trends, and talk in all things real estate, home ownership, and community related. So as you may notice, I have my guest here live in studio. This is week four of our series. We're talking about veterans loans, VA loans. And joining me, I have Jenny Miller with Ross Mortgage. Thanks for joining us, Jenny. Thank you for having me. So yes, it's so great to have you here again. And uh, today we're going to be wrapping up our series on VA loans or veterans loans. So um, we talked about in the first week, we, we gave an inner, an overview of different types of loans mm-hmm. and where VA loans fat, fit into that. Ooh, I'm like, got the, the words going today. <laughs> Where, where it fit into that. And um, and then we started to talk about some of the major myths or misnomers or miscommunications about the VA loans. Mm-hmm. And today we're going to be talking about the last three. There are six, six that we talked about. We covered two in the first episode or the second episode, one last week yeah. and this week, three of them, they kind of all bundle somewhat together. So Um, That's what we're going to talk about them all together. And that is, are VA loans tougher to get through underwriting? Do they take longer to close? And are the appraisals tougher on VA loans? And the answer to those questions are... I'm going to go with no. No, no. No, <laughs> That's the winning. Always. If you haven't noticed the pattern this series, the winning answer is no. <laughs> no. So maybe it's not always. Yeah, not always. Well, yeah, no, not always. Okay, yeah. So, so okay, so going through underwriting and, and closing and, and appraisals, those are all kind of part of the loan the loan process. Yep. Um, so, so. I guess why do we why do we have this misconception out there that that these loans are tougher or take longer? Well, now I'm <laughs> going to be showing my age here. Okay, all right. Um, so I mean, I've been um in loan originating for over 20 years now. Yeah, hard to believe. That's why I look the way I do. You look Just beautiful. Kidding. You Just look kidding. fantastic. Um, <laughs> but you know, VA has had the reputation. You know, I heard it on the streets for many many years of being notoriously low and notoriously slow. Hmm. All right? Um, and we'll stay out of any government and politics and things like that. <laughs> yeah, we'll but set that aside. Yeah. Exactly. But, um, you know, notoriously low, notoriously slow. Um, you know, they think there's some big scheme out there on the streets, you know, just to, <laughs> you know, they want the veteran getting ripped off. So, you know, they're purposely doing, you know. Right. They being like the VA appraiser or whatever. Um but, you know, really the first, these are kind of a little more lender focused yeah, in a yeah. way because um, with VA loans, yes, you know what I mean, with anything government, you know, there are serious, there's requirements. But any loan type, your credit, income, assets, debt, all of that has to make sense and meet meet guidelines, right? Right, right. But the, the really cool thing, um, I think with with VA loans, as many people don't realize, and this is, it's cool, it's just like the other loans, yeah. 99% of lenders have um, in-house underwriting. The loan does not go to the VA okay. for underwriting. Right. right. So you're not like you're not shipping it off to the government and waiting for a response. Exactly. Where maybe that's where some of those misconceptions are coming in. Why it could potentially take longer. So right. Really, it's the speed of the lender that you're working with. And and we do have to say it is the speed at which the buyer gets information back because throughout the loan process, there are always pieces of information that need to be provided. Yep. So if a if a buyer is, a purchaser is, you know, providing that information right away or shortly after it's asked for, then obviously the loan process is moving through quicker. And if somebody takes, you know, maybe a week to get some key information in, well, then your process is going to be a little bit slower. But it has nothing to do with the type of loan. Nope, not at so, all. And okay. like I said, you know, the cool thing about the VA loans as well, um, if it's not in the, the handbook, if you've got a scenario or situation and you're like, I've been looking, you know, under whatever the headline is, the topics, and if it's not in there, yeah, it's not a no. Right. So okay. That's yeah. That's pretty cool. All it's right. Like yeah. There's a lot of obscure things that come yeah. up throughout the loan <laughs> process, um, and underwriters are encouraged to consider really every possible um, appropriate factor. Okay. When reviewing, you know, scenarios that require underwriting discretion. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe somebody is at the tippy top, maybe of their debt to income, right? But they are. Um, there's residual income and things to consider. Um, but underwriters are encouraged. To say yes, 
Okay. And um, that's that's awesome. Like yeah. I said, it's not necessarily always cut and dry. Um, okay. And as long as the lender can document their reasoning, right? Okay. Yep. Um, that further helps the lender then get VA, you know, the VA guarantee or the insurance, you know, on that loan in particular. So um, the underwriters, you know, every you just get more of a feeling like of unity, right? And everybody is mm -hmm. looking for a way to say yes yeah, to the veteran. That's great. You know, so it's not necessarily harder. Sometimes building that case is harder. Right. But, um, yeah, there's no conspiracy, right? To right, just right. But, but when you say building that case is harder, I mean, it's it's no no harder than any other loan, right? I mean, it, again, it comes down to, like, having that information, right, and mm -hmm. asking. So I know I was, I was at an event last month and talking with a woman – whose um, you know, daughter and, and son-in-law were going through the, the loan process. And she's like, I don't know. I'm a little bit worried because they keep coming back asking them for all of this information. And you know, when she explained to me what it was, I said, that's all normal. You know, that's actually part of the problem process. And it's actually a very good sign. You know, it just means that you're, you're moving through. And she's like, oh, She's like, that makes me feel so much better, <laughs> so much better. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's, um, you know, do providing documentation when you're asked for more documents or you're asked to provide things to help underwriting, it's because they're trying to help you. So it, that's that's mm -hmm. a good thing. It so, is definitely yeah. a good thing. So, um, you know, again, that one's a big no, right? Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, and as far as VA loans taking, you know, longer to close, yeah. It's everything is a team effort, right? Right. It's yep. like um, we tell the buyers, hey, we're holding the hands. We're best friends, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm your best friend who only calls you when I want something, yeah. right? <laughs> right? Not using you, but that's right. why I'm, who I'm going to be in your life. Yeah. Um, but, you know, VA loans, they don't necessarily take longer to close, mm -hmm. right? Like I said, because it's not going to the VA, right? right. It's going in-house, right? right? And so um, underwriters have the authority to make those decisions. Um, the average VA loan, which I thought this was kind of interesting, um, closed within five days of conventional loans. Okay. This was in the past year. Um, and when I think about, well, why would it take five days longer? Yeah. Um, many times, at least this is my experience, um, on conventional loans, if a borrower was putting 20% down or more, mm -hmm. um, many times there was those um, appraisal waivers right. that yeah. were given. So. I could see where saving time maybe by not having an appraisal required. Sure. Would be, you know, you're putting zero down in the VA loan. There's, you're probably going to need that appraisal. Right. 100% of the time. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> so um, I could see that being the disparity. But five days, that's yeah. nothing. In the scheme of things, five days really is is not. I mean, if, if a deal is going to make or break over five days, um, that would have me question some other things. So Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. With if all other things, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so like I said, you know, okay, and, and maybe there was a time and a place for being notoriously slow. You know what I mean? Notoriously low, right? But that's in the past. It is in the past. That's in the past. I think. I think some of it too is that we have, um, you know, more loan officers who are experienced in working with VA loans. Mm -hmm. um, I think in the past, you know, they they did take a little bit longer because. You know, if somebody doesn't know what they're doing or how to work through a loan, that's different, right? But that's the same with anything that's new or different. Um, you know, so there there could be some their education and coming up to speed on that. So yeah, absolutely. And technology yeah. has also you know propelled us. We're not faxing things, right? We're right. Faxing in orders yeah. and all that other good stuff. Yes. Yes. Yeah, beepers. <laughs> go on. Yes. Um, and then I think the other you know um, the final. Myth, this appraisals, you know, talk, yeah, right? yep, um, yep. You know, our appraisals you know, tougher with uh, VA loans, right? And so, yep. they're not necessarily tougher, right? No, just like any of the other government loans we have, um, VA calls it um, minimum property requirements, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if you look at any government backed loan, and I say government backed because if you're paying PMI, it's backed by the the government, right? Yeah. Um, you know, they're looking in the home in terms of habitability and safety. Right. right, right. Um, and so, whether you, someone may think something's nitpicky, what have you, um, VA, FHA, even RD, um, the habitability and safety requirements, mm -hmm. like I said, are the same, if not very similar. But the, probably the the coolest thing about the VA appraisals, um, because you know, every now and then a house may not appraise for the agreed upon sales <laughs> price. Well. No matter what loan type you have, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter the loan type. Um, you know, all of us who have been in this industry, you know, 
long enough. You have definitely had, um, you know, you've definitely had an appraisal that has come back that you're like, what? You know, and, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Conventional loan, FHA, VA, I mean, it, it just happens because an appraisal is subjective. It's one person's opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, they can decide yay or nay on something for whatever their reasoning is. Exactly. And so, you know, to address that point. Yeah. I'm sorry. Dude. Well, I was going to say, but with whereas with most loans, mm-hmm. when that happens, if the appraisal comes back and it's low, let's say it's low and I mean, you only have a couple of options. You have to scrap that loan process and start over again mm-hmm. so that you can get a new get a new appraisal. But that's only with conventional, right? Because <laughs> yep. I don't want to get into too much detail because FHA, that sticks with the house, um, you know, or you, I mean, you have to come up with more money um, a, as a purchaser. So typically that's what happens. But with VA, there it's different. You actually have a second chance. Right. You yeah. actually have two processes to okay. increase value. Um, so, again, we're just going to assume we had a, an appraisal come in a little bit light, right? Yep. Oh, I shouldn't even say that. Before we even get the light appraisal, yeah. we're going to get <laughs> – sorry about that. Um, yeah. Something called Tidewater. Okay. And that's yeah. where, when the appraiser reaches out, and typically to the lender, and initiates Tidewater. That's the appraiser telling the lender that they're having a hard time coming up with comps that are going to support the sales price on the house. Okay. So they're kind of yep. waving, uh, you know, they're, their they're, hand. they're waving the flag saying, hey, help me. Before I put this where it becomes a final document, I'm just letting you know that I need some help to be able to show the value. Exactly. And so, so as, as the lender, then I can reach out to, you know, the listing agent, yep. buyer's agent, ask for additional comparables. And send that you know to the appraiser. We only have forty eight hours to do that, so there's a yep. time limit. We can sure. drag it out. Right. Yep. So no, we don't want a longer process. No, we don't. We, we want to keep things keep things moving. Exactly. So, so yeah. um, there's forty eight hours, and then yeah. the appraiser has to you know come back with with the report. Now, um, so that's either- good. So getting that advance notice um, because sometimes it can be. I, I know we've had some transactions where sometimes it's as simple as. Some of the comparables mm-hmm. that the appraiser is looking at, there's there's misinformation or it's not quite accurate. And so when you can get that corrected or get the, the appropriate information so that apples to apples are being compared mm-hmm. as opposed to apples and oranges, it sometimes can be a very simple thing. Whereas, again, with other types of loans, appraisers are just going to use what they have, move forward, that's it. But you're getting this, this hey, just just want to let you know. So, okay, so so there's Tidewaters initiated and you can um, provide additional comps and many times that is, that's all that's needed. And then, you know, you can move forward. Now, what right. if it doesn't? What if Tidewater and, you know, the appraiser doesn't get what he or she needs, then what is the next step? So the appraiser is going to then, you know, issue value mm-hmm. and send that report to the lender. So yep. they were either, sometimes they're not provided any comps and sometimes they're provided... Good comps, sometimes they're provided bad comps. Yeah. <laughs> but ultimately, it comes back to us as, you know, the lender, yeah. right? And once again, we're going to take a look at, all right, did we get value or did we not? In the event that um, the value that was needed was not achieved, the lender then can go a step further, which is bypassing that appraiser or the appraisal itself. And we call it an ROV or reconsideration of value. Okay. Um, so... That process, rather than get into a ton of more detail here, yeah. essentially, though, the lender then, with the appraisal, with any additional, you know, comps and things of that nature, sends that appraisal over to the VA and requests a reconsideration of value. So it's another set of eyes. And it re- okay. this one really does go so to the So this time it does. So mm-hmm. only if we get through all of these different steps does it mm-hmm. actually go to the VA. It's, it's not part of the, the regular process. But... It is an addition. And again, keeping in mind, if you if you watched all the previous episodes, um, you know, you really heard and learned how the VA is looking out for the veterans best interest. So mm-hmm. a lot of the for, with the program that they have, with some of the, the guidelines that they have in place, it's really to make sure that the veteran is getting, you know, the best opportunity possible. Mm-hmm. So if it goes to the VA, this piece of it, it's yeah another opportunity for the VA to say okay can we help you know right can so we help the veterans it's a reconsideration yeah. of value right and based on everything that they've been presented 
the VA um, could very well then agree and, yeah. you know, go ahead and increase the value yeah. then on the appraisal. So yeah. it's kind of overriding that. So, again, keeping it, you know, simple. Yeah. This is really the only loan type where you've got an opportunity before you actually see the appraisal. Yes. And then even after once you've received it because, you know, going to the VA for that um, ROV, again, everybody's trying to advocate for the veteran. Right. Right? Yep. And the veteran agreed to a sales price, and if the um, the VA can support that sales price mm -hmm. versus say, yes, yeah, sorry, and maybe the deal fall apart for the veteran. Right. You know, um, it's it's just another great opportunity. Yeah, um, and it's great. And it works. I know you and I have worked on yeah. transactions. We've, wor we're, we've worked on many um, VA loans and transactions, yeah. but we, we've had this specific situation as well where we had to have the, the reconsideration of value, and, and it worked out favorably for for the veteran so yeah absolutely yeah. so it, and it's when you actually see it in action right and yep. you get a positive result of course yeah. you know you makes you yeah. more of a believer yeah. right <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so, so um yeah va i'm telling you they're no no longer notoriously slow yeah and, and nobody that's old news that's old news, old news. so yeah <laughs> and, and no one is purposely trying to come in low to get the veteran right. a better deal I, it's an opinion of value sure and um yeah. You know, well, I think one thing that we want to reiterate is that when we're talking about the process again, is that and it goes back to what we said in the previous episode when we were talking about, you know, the different fees and understanding who it is that you're working with. So you want to make sure as a veteran that you are working with a loan officer who is experienced working on VA loans and, um, you know, and that their organization is also experienced with that because that does make a difference as well. Somebody who's experienced is going to be able to take you through the process smoother, has been through all of the, yeah, has been through all of the different scenarios and has experience with those as well. So, so that, that does contribute to the time frame as well. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. We got to know how to get you yeah. from A to B to C <laughs> to Z and, yeah. and know what the next steps are. But, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, hopefully we've given, um, you know, your yeah. audience some really good information, some more insight. Um, and as always, you know, yeah, if anybody, so I just want to kind of kind of re recap what we've talked about in the series. So that way, if uh, you missed anything, you can go back and watch one of the previous episodes. The first episode, we gave kind of a high-level overview of the different types of loans, conventional FHA, um, RD, the USDA mm -hmm. loan, and VA. And then we've kind of, then we've gotten in in episodes two, three, and this one, four, where we're talking about some of the misconceptions, misnomers, miscommunication about VA loans. And we've kind of busted those myths so yep. the answer to all, all of them have been no or not not usually yeah. <laughs> so you're gonna want to go back and watch if there's if there's anything that you missed um, but ultimately this is a great loan option for those qualified veterans and it's definitely something that you should get the information and consider does it mean it, it's the choice that you want to make but at least get all of the information and find out how that what that looks like for you so absolutely and again yeah. we thank our veterans um, yes. for their service absolutely. and sacrifice their veterans and their families of course yes the families well, too it, it does affect their families as well yes absolutely and again i hope this was really helpful and i really appreciate you having me thank you so much thanks for joining us jenny and if any of you have any specific questions regarding veterans loans um, you can reach out directly to Jenny or you can contact me and I can get you in touch with her because we want to make sure that you get all of your questions answered. So thank you, Jenny, for joining us today and for the series. Thank you all for tuning in to Tea with Tracy and we'll see you next time.